As technology progresses, so does VFX. Nowadays, the only thing that really limits VFX is the time that can be spent on it. In other words, the budget. If production companies are willing to pay for the time it takes to get VFX perfect, they will be perfect. Unfortunately, this doesn't always translate into a box office hit. Although cheap and poorly executed VFX can make a good movie bad, high quality VFX won't make a bad movie good. So with that in mind, here are some of the most underrated or unacknowledged VFX of the last decade. Rise of the Planet of the Apes was criticised for the lack of reality in the lead ape character, Caesar. However, in the latter two films of the trilogy, this was no longer the case. Weta Digital proved why many consider them kings of the CG animal kingdom. Not only were the CG apes 100% photorealistic, but they expressed emotion. So much so that you don't just sympathise with them, but you find yourself siding with them against the human race. In order to accomplish this, Weta had to develop and perfect a number of their own tools. Their fur system was completely rewritten, their skin and hair shading models were advanced, and their facial performance capture technology was also perfected. They even wrote their own fur and hair grooming system, comically named Barbershop. The Marvel Universe films have some insane V effects, and the majority of them have not only had good reviews, but have done very well at the box office. However, for some reason, critics have been having a dig at Thanos. Digital Domain had Josh Brodin wear a mocap suit as well as a helmet that had two HD cameras running 60 frames a second to capture his facial performance. Although, the most amount of work went into the eyes, because the eyes are actually what convey the real emotion. A mouth may smile, but if the eyes don't sparkle, there is no happiness. Rather than marvel in the emotion they managed to convey, critics prefer to comment about skin that looks like a cantaloupe, and calling him a purple-headed warrior with a chin like a giant ball sack. Well, I suppose at least it's a photo-real ball sack. Blade Runner 2049 is a sequel to the 1982 classic Blade Runner. Making a sequel to a classic is always a daunting task. It creates so much speculation and hype that the movie is almost always going to fall short. And this would have been the case for Blade Runner 2049 had it not been for the VFX. Eight different companies work together to create a stunning world that manages to keep you enthralled whilst the slow burn storyline unfolds before you. They are in fact so stunning that not only do you forget that you've been sat watching for nearly three hours, but you realise you've had your mouth open too. Claims that The Lion King has lost its soul and become a National Geographic documentary may be bad for the film, but says a lot for the VFX. MPC created 1,500 shots of photorealistic animals that are so incredible that you are never quite sure which shots are real animals and which are CG. And they are all CG.
Disney's idea to remake all its animated classics using today's technology and VFX may seem like a great idea, especially to Disney's accountants and shareholders, but many feel that this is a money grab, and Disney has exchanged their childlike innocent imagination for adult cynical realism. When you find out Disney grossed nearly $1.7 billion on this film while MPC was forced to close down, it makes you wonder whether the Walt Disney Company is becoming more company and less Walt Disney. After receiving somewhat mixed reviews but an almost general consensus that this film was too long and too complicated because instead of using function to explain their science, they tried to use science to explain their function, what many people missed in this film were the incredible VFX that Deneg managed to produce. The jewel in their crown was Gargantua, the black hole. Working alongside the theoretical scientists Kip Throne, which, by using Kip's theoretical equations, could map out how millions of light beams travel through the warped space-time surrounding a black hole. Kip Thorne and the Deneg team published a scientific study on how they did this in February 2015. But it wasn't until April 10, 2019, that we understood just how good Deneg's black hole was. When the Event Horizon Telescope captured the first image of the black hole in the Messier 87 galaxy 50 million light years away. From the offset, it was always going to be hard for The Hobbit. The Lord of the Rings was a tough act to follow, and stretching out what was originally an average length book into a trilogy was always going to water things down. What wasn't watered down was the VFX. Peter Jackson's own VFX house, Weta Digital, took on the task, and in addition to incredible CG environments, Digi Doubles, CG Water and CG Fire, CG Dwarfs, Orcs and Elves, Weta created the photoreal dragon Smog. Not only did the dragon look so much like a real dragon that it made us forget that real dragons don't exist, but they managed to make it talk like Benedict Cumberbatch without losing the magic. Please give us a like if you enjoyed this video. Don't forget the links to the music used in this video are in the video description. And as always, be sure to let us know in the comments section which movie VFX you'd like to see behind next.